वेलकम टू माय विजन न्यूज टू न्यूज स्टोरीज बोथ आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वन फर्स्ट वन इज फ्रॉम द ओरोमिया रीजन ऑफ इथियोपिया वेयर सप्लेंटर ऑर्थोडॉक्स बिशप्स आर कंसोलिडेटिंग देयर कंट्रोल ऑफ चर्चेस दो द टू राइवल फैक्शन विद इन द चर्च साइंड एन एग्रीमेंट फ्यू डेज अगो बट एग्रीमेंट is not being implemented kidane merit is being celebrated by these uh, by all orthodox uh, followers and in romia we are seeing uh, the splinter group uh, uh, bishops at uh, churches in valega especially large gatherings are being seen in kamte uh, ambo and nedjo details for you the question is where are three archbishops the ones who signed the agreement uh, are they part of this splinter faction are they part of uh, orthodox church main group led by bune matius or are they playing a double game secondly we have sadkan uh, tagrais the top general sadkan gabret insai lieutenant general has shared a detailed road map for holding of uh, free uh, uh, fair and transparent elections in uh, tagray sadgan seems to be rejecting the committee uh, 11 member committee formed by tagray regional uh, government a few days ago which is being headed by another general tadase varade so uh, we are seeing clear division between sadkan and varade what is sadkan proposing how should interim government be established in tagray we have details for you because uh, sadkan has written a uh, detailed article about how to conduct uh, regional election in tagray how to install an interim government uh, question is will uh, f- uh, TPLF will Tigray regional government agree with Sadkan's proposal? Firstly, viewers, uh, Orthodox Church of Followers are celebrating Yekat at uh, 16 today. Kidane merit uh, celebrations are underway at churches, uh, uh, Orthodox churches in Ethiopia and. Uh, we are seeing celebrations in oromia as well especially in valaga we have seen pictures from valaga which indicate that the appointee bishops are now in charge of churches and these celebrations in valaga and uh, the previous administration has not been allowed to return to these churches we know that abone gabriel was appointed by three archbishops as archbishop of valega abone west valega abone barsoma was appointed as archbishop of east valega and uh, in shua west shua abone vostotius was appointed uh, he was due to arrive in ambo then he cancelled his visit uh, Uh, now what we have learnt is that uh, abune gabriel was seen in a nejo you can see some pictures on your screen abune gabriel appointed as a bishop archbishop in west valaga with three archbishops he is there in nejo in charge of uh, nejo uh, in charge of uh, west valaga diocese abune barsoma seen in nakamte today at uh, uh, kidane mere celebrations and abune barsoma was appointed as east valaga archbishop uh, and he has appointed some deacons as well so he is not only in charge of east valaga but he is making further appointments too thirdly we are receiving pictures from ambo shova west shova and the large crowds are being seen in ambo to welcome the new appointee we we'll have been coming videos about who is going to be in charge of uh, shoa diocese uh, abone avostotius one of the archbishops or someone else 
so it's very clear now that the 25 appointees they are forming a separate synod they are rebelling the three archbishops uh, where are they are they part of this splinter 25 uh, uh, bishops appoint, appointed bishops groups group or are they part of uh, uh, abune matthias led main church faction their titles have been restored abune serios abune vastotius abune zinamorkos their titles have been revoked uh, restored revoked earlier but restored now they're part of the church uh, these uh, supplanter uh, appointee archbishops are now the ones who are leading the split between uh, Romia region based faction and main orthodox church faction the role of three archbishops is crucial will they stand with uh, their appointees or will they uh, and secondly, uh, they are silent. They are not saying a word about the activities of these appointees. Rather, they want the uh, Orthodox Church, uh, the Holy Synod, uh, to accept these appointees as bishops. But uh, the Holy Synod, uh, the Church wrote a letter to federal court yesterday and it uh, said in that letter that uh, the appointees were violating uh, church law, they were not part of the church. But uh, the Holy Synod confirmed the restoration of titles of three archbishops, Abunis Serios, Inamorkos, and Avastotius. So either the three archbishops are playing a double game or uh, means they are uh, claiming uh, that they are independent but uh, they have uh, connection on both sides. Or the appointees are rebelling. Uh, they don't want to be a part of Orthodox Church of uh, Ethiopia led by Bune Matthias because their titles are not being restored. Their appointments as bishops are not being accepted by the church. Where is the Romeo government? The Romeo government is obviously backing these uh, appointee bishops uh, and uh, earlier administration uh, could not return to their churches. Now, let's see what happens. Uh, court decision is also going to come in coming days about Orthodox Church's case. Orthodox Church filed a case with the Federal Court of Ethiopia, Federal High Court, uh, asking the court to pass a decision that uh, the takeover of churches by Oromia region-based supplanter Orthodox faction is illegal. Let's see what court decides, but conflict continues. Uh, secondly, we have Sadkan, a Tigray is a top journal. Sadkan Gabriel Sai, Lieutenant Journal, has written an article about how to establish interim government in Tigray. Sadkan is clearly disagreeing with the Tigray regional government, with TPLF, with the committee formed by Tigray government. Tigray government has formed an 11 member committee, which is uh, 11 or 9 member committee, I think. Uh, it's 9 member, I think. And uh, uh, the committee is led by uh, Tadasse Varade, another Tigray general. The committee is holding consultations for establishment of interim government Tigray. Opposition parties, Batona, Salsevogene, Tigray Independence Party, they have boycotted the proceedings of this committee. What is Sadgan saying? Sadgan has raised some very pertinent questions. Firstly, he says, who appointed these nine members of the committee which is holding discussions? Why is that no opposition parties are members of this committee? No uh, one from diaspora, he claims, is part of this committee. Secondly, he says that the committee's mandate should be to consult all stakeholders and then to prepare recommendations. But committee is working as if it will form uh, interim government, which is uh, not transparent because the nomination of the members of the committee is not transparent. What is he proposing? 
Sadkan, what he has proposed uh, indicates that uh, basically he wants no role of Tagarai regional government in the formation of Tagarai interim government or TPLF. He wants a committee with members from TPLF, opposition parties, businessmen, diaspora, etc., military as well. The committee should hold discussion with all stakeholders. The committee should prepare recommendations. Uh, the report should be submitted to a council. A 100 member a council should assess the report of the committee. And this council is the representation of all parties, all stakeholders, not parties. Stakeholders mean uh, political parties in Tegarai, uh, military, uh, diaspora, civil society, etc. This council then should make a final decision about establishment of Tegarai interim government for holding of election. And this council uh, should have representation of all stakeholders. The council should appoint an administrator for holding of election. It should ensure that election is held in a transparent manner, that uh, judiciary, uh, bureaucracy, they don't take any sides. Sadgan wants Addis Ababa to be involved as well. He wants international community to be involved as well. He says, he says in the article that International community played a key role in uh, the Pretoria, in leading to Pretoria Agreement. So, so while consultations are underway for establishment of interim government in Tigray, uh, international community is not on board. International community should be taken on board. Federal government as well. And then uh, an inclusive, participatory, Transparent mechanism should be uh, uh, developed for holding of uh, election in Tigray. So that he argues that Tigray is facing lots of challenges. Reconstruction uh, of Tigray. Tigray is uh, in a neighborhood which is hostile neighborhood. People have suffered a lot rehabilitation, lots of other issues. So for all these challenges, uh, to meet these challenges, you need genuine leadership, political leadership in Tigray. And that can only come through transparent regional elections. What Sadkan is saying, uh, it makes sense, no doubt about that. Uh, what he is proposing is definitely it should be implemented with some amendments. But question is, will regional government, will TPLF listen to him? TPLF has been in power uh, in uh, at the center in Tegarai. But if Sadkan's recommendations are implemented, TPLF will lose its leverage which it has now. It can influence the holding of regional election in its support. Uh, will TPLF agree to Sadkan's proposal? That remains to be seen. I have not seen any comment from Tegarai leaders, uh, TPLF leaders supporting Sadkan's uh, proposals. Sadkan, where the split is also very obvious now. Where they is supportive of TPLF's position. Sadkan wants uh, more participatory mechanism for holding of regional election in Tigray and for establishment of Tigray interim government. I have been saying, if you uh, have been watching my videos, that uh, there must be some intervention from outside for the establishment of interim government in Tigray. Addis Ababa should intervene, I think, international community as well. Otherwise, uh, they are fighting among themselves and they are unable to uh, develop uh, to agree on uh, a transparent mechanism for holding of election and for establishment of regional interim government in Tigray. Thank you for watching.